Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21, and I'm giving you a little super secret sneak peek into the Skunk Works here. Now, this video is probably not going to air for a while. Today is Easter Sunday, so um, I'm plan not really planning on revealing this what I'm doing here until after I actually put it into practice and you know show that it works for real. So let's just you know, so this is going to be a little bit of a time warp. So, but what I'm doing here. And if you look at the bottom, this is Dizzy. And I haven't shown you this yet, but this is Dizzy's aerodynamic under trip. So part of how I believe I need to get to my goals, well, actually two big reasons. Um, I think that a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to focus in on the top of the car, trying to make the top of the body slick. They try to focus on making the top of the body is really slick and streamlined, but they don't really spend a lot of time thinking about the underside of the car. Now, if you think about it, there's suspension under here. There's all sorts of stuff for air to get in, into, interact with, and cause drag. So the best way to do it is to follow the lead that the X01 did, the Traxxas, and just go ahead and make a clean aerodynamic under track. And also, so just, you know, completely following what Traxxas did, I took an X01 diffuser, mounted on it here, put it into a clean underbody, and that will make a nice, clean, aerodynamic uh, surface that will allow the diffuser to do its good work. And I'll talk about that in another video. But then also just protect the car as well. Because you need to keep, isolate all this stuff aerodynamically. But then you also, as a Lamont recently showed in one of his speed run videos, these underbodies of the car, especially when you're sitting this close to the ground, they get a lot of punishment. You're only a few millimeters off the surface, and if you get a big bump, you're scrape, scrape, scrape. So you need a skid plate that is durable and tough enough to handle it. So that's where I'm going in and digging my old fiberglass. I've got quite a bit of excess left over, but I also have an, a brand new pack on top of this right here, so that's plenty. So this aerodynamic under tray is getting a full fiberglass treatment. I also have a cutout panel that fits on the back of the car, attaches to the body, that basically isolates the air from the wheel wells. And this is getting fiberglass too. So step one, your fiberglass really, when you're dealing with fiberglassing on top of like classic parts, you know, like I did right here with, this is Dizzy's underbody, or this is the underside of Dizzy's body. And in this case, it's fiberglass onto paint. The problem with this kind of setup is that the paint is the weak link in the whole mechanical system. So if the paint starts to peel away, you know, then that, you know, basically that, that paint peeling away causes a weakness inside the whole mechanical system here. Now, nice thing about this though, so if you see, you have all these molded pieces. So you still have the Lexan body and the fiberglass body kind of being joined by all these mechanical turns and everything so that makes them both a lot more rigid so that in itself you know helps out everything tremendously but you know you still have this issue with adhesion between the underside of the paint and with the fiberglass so to help that out a little bit in this situation i'm just leaving this and this isn't like this is actually polyurethane uh plastic so it's not the best stuff and it's, it's brittle and I discovered that when I was doing a little testing run right in front of the cul-de-sac, I hit a bump that caused it to bottom out and basically snap this thing. But for my purposes, that doesn't matter because I'm fiberglassing and I'm going to fiberglass both sides. You know, this like this basically in the middle just acts like a form. So that's not going to be the source of the strength. The strength is all going to come from the fiberglass. So all this is doing is holding my shape. So I'm just going to glass over all this stuff. And you see I've got some Gorilla Tape reinforcement in here as well because again i don't care about you know this stuff other than just holding my shape together so you see right here this piece looks a little bit different so i went over this whole surface with a scotch bite pad and that actually and you see it, it makes tiny little microscopic scratches that the epoxy that i'm going to use can seep right in now that's another little thing to touch on because when you do composites and fiberglass is a composite because it's composite means more than one so this is a composite material made of fiberglass cloth and in my case i'm going to use epoxy resin 
most guys I mean with fiberglass you can also use polyurethane resin you can use all kinds of other good passive resins it really depends on the kind of strength that you want to get but in this case like I said with Dizzy you know I've used poly I used uh, the epoxy resin and it's pretty durable it's nice and flexible you know it's got a high bond strength so I'm pretty happy with it so I'm just gonna repeat the same with the under tray here although I'm using a different brand here than I did on the other side so anyway so the way this is going to go now I'm going to wrap this whole piece in fiberglass then I'm going to use the epoxy resin and impregnate it in so this is going to turn from this white material to a nice clear like this right here and I'm going to do the, this rear backing piece here I'm going to do this under tray and I'm also going to do one other thing because one of the problems I see with this body here is that because the back here has a lot of shapes that are forming into it that actually acts like structural reinforcement it makes the back half of the, of the body really really stiff and, and and really strong but then i have this big heel point here where this thing just wants to bend right by the wheel wells basically there's a fold line right here if i get enough force in there it just wants to bend or even snap now that's a big problem now because i've mounted my diffuser here and most guys mount the diffusers or the splitters to the body but in order to do that in my application, I have to rig up a structure and everything, and that would be heavy. So what I'm doing here instead is I've bolted it to the body, and now I'm gonna actually form in some additional fiberglass reinforcement inside of here. And I got a special technique for that that I'll show you in a little bit. And once I do that, that's gonna make this front clip much, much stronger. So I won't have to worry about the deformation here. And it's gonna make it, uh, you know, this, this structural piece a lot more durable. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on break and then I'll come back when I have something else to show you. All right guys, so here's the final result. And you can see fiberglass under tray. And check out how clean this thing looks. And because I've got a fiberglass body and a fiberglass under tray, and this is cured inside with Velcro, this is a solid structural unit. So this stupid, well, I don't wanna say stupid, but this thing right here is you know rigid it's strong so this should give me a good amount of protection going down the road and i shouldn't have to worry about it flapping or doing anything that i'm unsettling at speed so i'm pretty happy with the result here now i'm probably well i don't know i was i was going to paint this but i kind of like the way it looks semi-translucent so i might just leave it like this so I'll take it out in the cul-de-sac, do a little testing run, just to make sure that everything's all copacetic and all that. And then hopefully you guys will see this going down and doing some full speed runs here very shortly. All right, I'll, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. All right, so remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, do it all over again. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and check me out on my Facebook and you know, all that jazz. All right, so as always, our house one signing off. Peace.